Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm coming to y'all with yet another acoustic guitar review. And we're looking at yet another one by Ovation because I am a huge Ovation fan. And I've wanted one of these things for a good long while now and I was able to get one a couple of months ago. And I've got a lot to say about it. So before we jump into the video, a couple things I want to get out of the way right now as always. The first one this is not a shut up and play kind of video, so if you are here for a tone demonstration, you're going to want to look somewhere else. Uh, I will be giving a tone demonstration later on in the video, however, as is always the case in these amateur guitar reviews where we don't have a recording mic set up about four inches away from the uh, face of the guitar, it's not going to be the best representation of how the guitar actually sounds. I do want to get some guitar comparisons done, and I do have one planned for this where I will have a microphone just a few inches away from the sound hole plugged into my audio interface and recorded that way with video being captured through my crappy webcam using Bandicam. Uh, so the video quality won't be great, but the audio quality will be pretty good on that and give a better representation on how it sounds. You'll just have to wait for that comparison video for that. Uh, but no, this is not a tone demonstration video. The goal of this video is to talk about the guitar itself, how well it's made, the fit and finish, what I think of it, who I think it's suited for, so on and so forth. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and mention is initially I was going to make this a two for one review with this, you know, applause AA14 and this guitar here, which is an Academy by Ovation KA14. Uh, essentially, very much the same guitar in so many ways, but also very much not in so many others. And so I decided to split them up between two different review videos. So I can make sure each one got the uh, the full attention that it deserved. And by the way, this is what I'll be comparing the applause against eventually in a head-to-head -head comparison video. So that should be pretty fun. But yeah, so one cool thing about this guitar, and by the way, I have my notes over here so I don't forget anything. This one is from 1972, back when Ovation was making all of their stuff in Connecticut. Uh, I believe it was Connecticut. One way or the other, it was the USA. And that included these applause guitars, these super budget, you know, entry level guitars. Um, you can buy one of these these days for about 150 bucks on, I'd say, the average to low end. Um, high end on these is about 300 bucks. So I got mine on Goodwill's website for like 70, which is insane. I think it was like 65 plus shipping, which ended up coming out to like. 80 something which is honestly uh, an incredible price for a US made guitar <laughs> so yeah this is an American built guitar so for anyone out there who doesn't like guitars made overseas you don't have to worry about that do I personally think there's anything wrong with, with Chinese and Indonesian built guitars no not at all but I know there's a lot of people out there who disagree with that and they want American made products well guess what American made products okay the next thing to say about this guitar is its construction is anything but standard. So going over the tech specs real quick, we have a laminated spruce top, and we don't know if it's Sitka spruce or what exactly. It's likely Sitka. I highly doubt they'd even be using a laminated Ariondac for something like this, or European spruce or anything of the sort back in the day. It's almost certainly a Sitka spruce laminate. And the back is made, the back and sides are a deep bowl. So you can see that very, very deep bowl made out of Lyra mold. Now that caught me off guard because I know Ovation for their Lyra cord. Okay, it's an injection molded fiberglass. So I had to look up what in the hell Lyra mold was. And after many hours of research, uh, nothing came up. And so I went to the forums and I talked to people who were much more experienced and knowledgeable than myself. And the answer they gave me was... As far as we can tell, it's the same thing as Lyra Cord. So Lyra Cord, Lyra Mold, who knows? Probably just a name change over the years, or maybe it's to denote uh, the quality levels. Maybe if it's if the bowl meets the specifications they liked, they called it Lyra Cord and used it on their their high end guitars. And if it didn't, if it had some kind of flaw, they use it on their applause guitars. I know that's the case today. Uh, from talking to people, but apparently applause guitars today get the bowls that aren't quite good enough for ovations. So maybe that was the case back in the day as well. Honestly, who knows? It's just speculation. Uh, what you need to know is it is a very 
durable synthetic material that does its job of projecting the sound out of the sound hole very, very well. Okay, if you don't know, the top vibrating is primarily what generates your sound in conjunction with the saddle and the strings and all the other things the strings are contacting. That, that's why your top is called the soundboard. And the job of the back and sides, or the bowl in this case, is to take that sound and redirect it out of the sound hole. So when you have a wood back and sides guitar, uh, the wood will absorb some of that vibration just by the nature of it being what it is. Uh, this fiberglass will not. Okay, so it's all being projected out of the guitar, which results in a very loud and I'm not even hitting it as hard as I could. Very, very loud sound. This thing has volume, okay? Extreme volume, uh, which some people love and some people hate. Personally, I like having the option to have a nice loud guitar. Uh, I personally feel that the shallow bowls or the super shallow bowls like I've already reviewed on the Celebrity that I reviewed and the Custom Balladeer that I reviewed, those are already as loud as a full-size Dreadnought, genuinely. Uh, just by the, again, the nature of the, the, the bowls on those means that the thickness isn't as important. So how loud are these deep bowls? Uh, they are significantly louder than a Dreadnought. They are louder than a Jumbo. They are personally the loudest acoustic guitars that I've ever played. Okay? So for anyone out there who equates loud with good, you're going to love this. I'm not personally one of those people. I feel like uh, the quality of the sound does not have anything to do directly with the volume of the sound. But that's the material for the top, back, and sides. We have this wonderful binding and purfling all around the top and body of the guitar. And by the way, when I say all around, it's actually overlaying the front face of this guitar a little bit. I don't know if I can make that show up on camera. You can kind of see it that way. So cool stuff there. We have a pick guard which is um, very unusual for an Ovation guitar, but I think it looks good against this nice sunburst finish. And they came in a variety of finishes, which I do have written down. So they came in sunburst, natural, tan, red, brown, terracotta clay, and that's it. So this is the sunburst. Then you have the natural, the tan, the red, the brown, and the terracotta, which is a clay color. Okay. We have a walnut bridge, and here's where things are going to get wacky. The nut and saddle are actually bone. Why is that wacky? Because this was an entry-level guitar even back in the day. You'd expect them to be plastic, but no, I've taken this saddle out because I thought I was going to have to shave it to get the action down, and it still, it had still had all the factory shims, so I was able to just remove some shims and get it where I wanted. And in do, when, I had a chance, when I had it out, I had a chance to look at it and feel it. It's actually a bone saddle and a bone nut. So that's kind of wacky at the price point. What's even more wacky is the neck. Okay, the neck and fingerboard. You're gonna see that and think that looks like wood. It's not. So at first glance, you think the neck is wood and you know maybe mahogany, and the fingerboard is probably ebony from the dark color. Well, I'm here to tell you it's all one piece aluminum. The neck, the fretboard, the frets themselves, and the headstock are all aluminum. They are a one-piece uh, cast aluminum, which is wacky. But I love it, and the simple reason why is all these years later, that neck is still straight as an arrow. And it's never going anywhere, because if you're using strings that are heavy enough to warp an aluminum neck, buddy, you gotta start reevaluating all of your choices when playing guitar. So, this has no truss rod. It doesn't need one. Much like all the carbon fiber guitars you find. Um, I know Rain Song for the longest time. I don't know if they still don't use truss rods, but for the longest time, no truss rod. And because you don't need one with the carbon fiber neck. It's not going anywhere. Very much the same case with the aluminum. So why does the back of it look like wood? Well, it's because I put a coating on it, which I've written down so I don't forget what it's called. It is called a... Urolite coating or Aurelite coating, U-R-E-L-I-T-E. So it's a coating that's meant to make it look and feel like wood. And it does a pretty good job of that. I know it doesn't get too cold or too hot, but that said, the sides of the neck, which maybe you can see. And by the way, yeah, we do have 
dots on the side there. But the sides of the neck are exposed aluminum, so those do get very cold or very hot depending on the weather, so that is a thing to be aware of. The fingerboard being aluminum and the frets being part of the same cast is a very interesting choice. You will find photos of these guitars where the finish on the front of the fretboard is all worn down, and uh, I personally kind of like that Boba Fett relic look, but a lot of folks hate it, so it's something to be aware of. One genuine concern is that the frets are going to be near impossible to replace, and I've talked with some luthiers, and from what I've gathered, they're not impossible to replace because they just essentially kind of cut them out, and then they can put new ones in, but it is more of a pain than if you were to just have regular frets inset. Now the upside is aluminum, despite being known as a very soft metal, can actually be an incredibly durable, very tough metal. Uh, much more so than the brass frets or bronze frets or whatever you usually see on a lot of uh, cheaper guitars. So even all these years later, there's very, very little wear on these fret wires. It's going to take a very long time to wear these fret wire down just because the metal is tougher than the average fret wire. So. Yeah, kind of a, a wild but fun fact. You can see we do have our dots along the fretboard, but they are not inlay. They are basically just someone took a drill and they very lightly tapped a bunch of points here. So it's the bare aluminum coming through the front, giving us the appearance of dot inlay. And the tuners are a 12 to one ratio trapezoidal tuner, which typically are some of the worst tuners I've ever used uh, on most guitars, in most cases. Trapezoid tuners usually suck in my experience, uh, but much to my surprise, these have held tuned really well. Uh, I haven't played this guitar in a couple of weeks, and I took it off the wall to get ready to start uh, reviewing it for the video, and I grabbed my tuner, which, you know, got set up over here, and every single string was still in tune, despite having not played it for weeks, despite the air conditioner running, it stayed in tune wonderfully. So there's always exceptions to every rule, and I guess these are some of those exceptions. So actually pretty decent tuners on here. I wouldn't bother replacing them. And I would hate to have to replace them anyways because it would mean tapping holes in the back of an aluminum headstock, and I can't imagine what that might do to your drill bit. Especially a drill bit small enough to make these, uh, these holes, or these screw holes. So yeah. Now I put the action about where I wanted it on this guitar, which you can see there, but there's still, I think, two more shims in there that I can remove to get the action down even lower if I wanted to. We do have two strap buttons, one here at the bottom of the guitar, and one up here behind the neck, which are a great location for the strap buttons, and this thing hangs wonderfully on your neck. This is using the old-school, original applause headstock design, which I personally think has a lot more... Uh, personality than the later designs, than literally all of the later designs for applause. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. I like that it stands out from the ovations uh, while still being unique like the ovations are. Now with this being an ovation product, it is not immune to the typical ovation issues. In this case, maybe you'll be able to see it. There you go, right there, the light's catching it. There's a finish crack that runs right down here. Okay, were you able to see that? Really is hard to catch it. It's a very, very light crack, very, very thin. There you go. And it doesn't go all the way through the wood, but there is a finish crack. And these kind of cracks, whether it's in the finish or the wood itself, it's just so, so common with ovations because as the weather changes, even a laminate wood is still wood. It's still going to expand and contract to a lesser degree than a solid wood, but nonetheless. And as it tries to expand out and pull in, the sides of that fiberglass bowl don't budge, and that can create a lot of stress on the top. Okay? And it also has, um, you can see those uh, mother of pearl dots in lace there. Those are covering screws or bolts that go through the top of the guitar, which can introduce another structural weakness uh, over time. Oftentimes on at these guitars, that's the first place you'll see, you'll see cracks forming in the wood is where that bolt is refusing to move especially, and that's a stress mark for the wood. 
So that hasn't happened on this one yet, but it does have the finish crack. The other issue is I had to super glue this rosette back down because you know, like with a lot of ovations, it was coming up over the years and it needed to be re-secured. I think there's still a couple of points here, here at the very, very bottom. I can still slip my thumbnail through there. So um, I need to touch it up a little bit better. But yeah, these are, those are common ovation issues and this one is no exception. So be aware of that. It, it is going to have some of your typical ovation problems. One typical ovation problem it doesn't have, however, despite being a deep bowl, is you may notice that this thing is not sliding off my leg. It sits very, very well on my leg, which is rare for a deep bowl ovation. And I'm not sure if I can make this show up on camera, but the contour of that bowl, okay, the radius of it, is not nearly as round. You can see it's very much flat here before it radiuses off to the bowl design, unlike most deep bowl ovations that are actually branded ovation. So as a result, this actually sits on your leg far better than the average ovation deep bowl guitar. So point to applause on that one. Uh, they really, uh, their budget brand was doing it a little bit better than their main brand, which I think is wild. Now, before I start doing tone demonstrations and everything else, let me look at my notes and make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Oh, I have scale length, 25.5 inches for the scale length. The nut width is 1.65 inches or 42 millimeters, so a bit of an odd nut width. And, oh yeah, how could I forget? Variations of the guitar. So there are a lot of weird varieties of this thing. Uh, so... This is the AA-14 Pure Acoustic, and there's also the AE-14, which is Acoustic Electric, also with a deep bowl, same finish options. Then you have the AA-24. That's the 12-string version of this guitar, but it doesn't have the deep bowl. It has a shallow bowl. Same color variations. Then you have the AE-24. That's the Acoustic Electric 12-string version with a shallow bowl. Same color variations. Then after that, you have the Academy KA-14, which is here, which I'll review in a later video. 12 fret body instead of a 14 fret body, meaning that the, uh, the neck joins the body at the 12th fret. Wider neck angle, plastic top, and built molded in plastic bracing, uh, ABS plastic specifically, so that's pretty strange. A different headstock. And then finally, the Matrix 1132. So, same guitar, different headstock, different rosette, and no pickguard. Okay, so those are all the variations of this guitar. So there's quite a few of them out there. Uh, so you really do have your choice on which version you want to get. Now, again, I could just roll this into the same video, but it, it is different enough that I feel it warrants its own review video. So let's go ahead and play this thing a little bit so I can try to give you guys an uh, example of how it sounds. And I will sit a little closer to the phone just to try and give a better sound demonstration. curious this is strung up with diadario excess custom lights that's 1152 phosphor bronze coated strings so this how that's how big it sounds with these thin gauge strings on here 
Not sure how well it's going to come through the camera mic, but this thing has projection. It has a very, very loud voice. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, by the way, is there are no sharp fret ends. You wouldn't expect it to be considering they're molded into the guitar neck, so that's not really surprising. Let's do some chicken picking. <laughs> some finger style or finger picking So yeah, that's a pretty decent representation of the kind of sound of this guitar. Personally, I'm a fan of the sound. It sounds different from uh, pretty much every other guitar that I own, including the Plastic Top Cousin. And that's because it has a range that I feel like my other guitars don't have. What exactly is that? I'm not going to say in this video because I don't want to artificially color your impression on what you heard. I always hate that in review videos where someone says, oh yeah, the bass response of this guitar is inserts, you know, asinine number, uh, more noticeable than, you know, guitar Y. I, I don't like that because that's how one person's hearing it, sure, but we don't all hear things the same way. It's the reason why one person can love the sound of a tailor and think it sounds wonderful while the person sitting next to him can think it sounds sterile or it's too bright and they prefer the sound of a Martin. But then that tailor guy thinks that Martin sounds too boomy and bassy. It's a matter of personal preference and we all hear things a little differently. So I don't really like the idea of telling people what I think they should hear or even telling them what I hear because I don't want to make them artificially recognize those things. Uh, you're going to hear what you're going to hear, and that's the only impression that should matter to you, is what you hear and what you think. So, you now you can determine for yourself what you think of the, the bass response, or the, the highs, or the mids, or the lows, or whatever. Okay, that's all going to be a matter of personal preference. Is there factually a certain level of bass produced by one guitar when compared to another? Sure. Do we all pick up on it the same way? No. And the technicality doesn't really matter, does it? So, you determine for yourself what you think of the sound. I like it. I will say it's a little hard to sing with just because this guitar is so loud, especially with a pick, that I can drown my own voice out and I have to you know, make a conscious effort to strum even more lightly. 
but even barely strumming this thing is loud. It's extremely loud. Finger picking, I can still sing along with it. You know, I can still kind of get my voice in there with it. But because of the sheer volume, I don't personally find this to be a great vocalist guitar. Unless you sing loud as hell, in which case, yeah, it's great. Because I do know some people, uh, there's one that comes to open mic night in particular who comes to mind. He sings loud as hell. Like, he doesn't need a microphone. I'm not even kidding when I say he could sing with just his voice without a microphone and you would hear him all the way across the bar. And so a guitar like this, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great for that setting. doesn't have electronics, so I can't take it there. Um, but it would be great for that type of environment. But I think for most of us where our singing voice isn't, you know, um, church echo level loud, it may be a little too loud for you to use as a vocalist guitar. What it would be a great guitar for is if you're... Um, doing some recording and you need that super strong projection for an acoustic solo or something, it could work out really well for that. And I'm no, I'm no lead player by any stretch of the imagination, so I shouldn't even embarrass myself trying to do anything lead related, but... get that done with this and it won't be too quiet to be heard against the acoustic backtrack of the album so it could be good for people like that what I think it's really good for is if you're just playing and picking and having a good time and you're not singing along necessarily and it's a great front porch guitar it's a great campfire guitar it's a great traveling guitar because of the aluminum neck and the synthetic bowl and the laminate top and it provides a very different sound, I can almost guarantee, than anything else in your arsenal. So, do I recommend it? Hell yes, I love this guitar. The fit and finish is, in my opinion, superb. The feel is great. I love the feel of this neck. I love the material of this neck. I love the look of it with this nice sunburst. And I'm a big fan of the Ovation sound. And this one sounds different than all my other Ovations. So, but it still sounds like an Ovation which is a cool thing, I think. So yeah, that has been my long-winded review of the Applause AA14 Acoustic Guitar by Ovation. A very interesting budget offering from one of the most unique acoustic guitar companies on the planet. So I hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, and I'll see you later.